Well, good morning. At long last, I'm back. <laughs> so nice to be with you again. And we've got Louis Armstrong playing in the background. What a wonderful world. Um, sorry I wasn't around to wish you all the very best at the turn of the year. I finished work on the on Christmas Eve and uh, resume this Sunday. But we all need a wee rest and I certainly feel the better of mine. This morning, well, I've been looking at a, a passage in Romans chapter 12. It's so lovely. And what a wonderful world it would be if we all lived by the words in Romans 12. It really is a mandate for good living. It was read at the wedding of Prince William and Kate. And it was so perfect, this very special young couple who will have the great honour and privilege and responsibility of one day being our king and queen. And the words were just so lovely. Do not think of yourself as superior to anyone else. Um, keep companionship with those who are humble, those who have less. Uh, share what you have. And if at all possible, live in peace with everyone. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed uh, by the word of God. It's so easy to go with the flow of the world. And to an extent, we all do. And um, when I think back to when I was growing up 50, 60 years ago, many things that were taboo in that generation are now acceptable, more than acceptable. They have become the norm. And I'm sure there are things that, um, attitudes that we have now that are very negative towards situations that in another 20, 30 years, they too will be the norm. But just because, but just because something has become topical and uh, popular doesn't mean to say that it's ideal. In fact, there's one wise saying that many a very high ideal has been lost on the altar of conformity. So what should we conform to for our well-being and for the well-being of the world? Well, if you would care to take time to read Romans chapter 12, there you have it. A wonderful mandate for living. And it's impossible to live in Christ and for him to live in us without being transformed. It's not always a transformation that can be seen in real time. A wee bit like a flower breaking through the warm soil of the spring. It happens and um, just gradually they emerge and open up, but it can't be measured in real time. And in my experience, neither can a life lived in Christ. But transformation is taking place. It cannot fail to. So to be transformed means that we have to cleave to Christ as the grape clings to the vine, that his life may run in and through our own. God hopes that we will put our hand in his and go with him wherever he leads. We don't need to know where we're going. We all want to, but we don't need to. It's sufficient to know that God is leading and he has plans for us. It's written in Jeremiah chapter 29. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for you to prosper, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. What a blessing. Doesn't mean to say it will be an easy road. God often takes us over some very rough terrain, but he's always bringing a greater good to pass. Another thing Paul does in his letter to the Romans, chapter 12, is encourage us to use our gifts. Often we think we don't have any gifts. What can we give? We think of gifts as great skills and superior knowledge, but that's not what Paul means. You know, the, the greatest gifts are often the, the simplest gifts, an encouraging word, a warm smile, an open heart, an open home, an open hand, just to include people and for people to know that in you or in I, they have a safe place, just as we would hope to find in a friend. So I'm with Paul this morning. I urge you to conform 
to God and allow yourself to be shaped and moulded to his pattern of living. And then, like Louis Armstrong, we would all be able to sing, what a wonderful world. It is a wonderful world, but humanity has marred it. But it's never too late to be the change that we wish to see in the world. God bless. Bye.